Alrighty, so this is the FTX1 series. And the reason we're saying the series and calling it the series is because it really is not just a radio. It is a series of radios on there. This model that we have here, a lot of people have been seeing obviously the FTX1, but this is the FTX1 in the Optima version. So what is the Optima version? Well, it is the FTX1 here with the SPA1 as a package deal. So it's not just, when you buy the Optima, it's not just, hey, I'm just getting the amp or something. You're getting the whole complete radio set with it on there. Now, we built this with a concept of, as someone said yesterday, and I don't even know if it's a real word, modularity. <laughs> sounds like a cool word. It's, sounds, it's gonna be our new buzzword. Sounds good. Uh, but what it is, is basically, it's like you're at home. You wanna do 100 watts through um, HF and six meters. But now, or 50 watts on VHF and UHF. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go out somewhere. I wanna take it with me to go camping, whatever, whatever you do. You simply push the button on the top here and then it's gonna go ahead and disconnect. That simple and that easy on there. Now, a lot of people have had questions about the connections. The connections, yes, are built into on there. And then you have, in essence, technically, if you count both antenna ports, you have five antenna connect, or five connections you need to do on the radio. Um, we suggest always powering it off, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this part out here and then that is the antenna connections for the uh, HF and then as well as VHF. Next, you're gonna go ahead and unplug the speaker connection on there. You're gonna unplug the 13.8 volt DC and then you're gonna unplug the actual tuner amplifier connection cable on there. Now, this is the radio, this is good to go. What you can do then is, is you could either connect it with 13.8 volts DC, or as you see on the back here, there's the modularity concept. You can attach the battery to it. You can actually attach the FC80 antenna tuner over the battery with it too. So it allows you all that functionality in there. Now, when on battery, it does only do six watts. When you connect in the 13.8 volt DC, you're gonna be able to do 10 watts. But as you see here, very simple, easy. I mean, it's it's kind of like the old, old like military style, you know, hey, you know, yeah. I'll call it in there, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it does have a whole list of features on there too. This is the actual GPS chip. That is, is that available now? It, it is, if it's not available now, I know they're shipping. Um, okay. We have a lot coming in right now. Yeah. That's where there's been a lot of confusion of people saying, well, how soon is the Optima? How soon is the SPA1? We have um, them coming in right now. It's just a matter of getting them in and then getting them to the dealers for their, um, how do you wanna say, their, their pre-orders, however they have it set up. We don't know that with the dealers on there. Um, but the SPA1 itself, which you can buy later, is coming. That's probably going to be maybe say a month or two is what we're saying. We don't know how fast shipping is going to be. That's the only thing on there. It could be tomorrow, it could be one or two months from right so now. So when you say SB, SBA1, you mean the amplifier by itself without yep, this, the optimal. So right now, so like, okay. like if you bought the FT, FTX1F, uh -huh. you're going to get this, the battery, the microphone, everything you need to take this and start using it right away. This is going to be the SPA1, which you can buy separately. So you're saying, hey, you buy the FTX1F, you know what, I really want 100 watts, I really want more power, then later you can come and buy this. Now, you do get a discount if you buy it as the Optima package right off the bat, obviously, but yes, this is available on there. The other thing we did look at is we got the handle on the side, you have your connections there, so you can actually, there's actually feet, if you see on there. Yeah. So there's a whole host of mounting things on there. One of the things I will address, we get a lot of questions already on there, well, why, why is it, was it designed to be mobile? Realistically, it wasn't designed to be mobile because one, this takes about 20, I wanna say 22 amps conservatively, I think it is, for running at full high power. Not a lot of times you can do that in a mobile environment. Yeah, you can run off the battery, but it's really designed to be, this is the base you keep at home, this is what I'm taking in the car, wherever I wanna go and do it, and then give you either six or 10 watts. Now, if we take a look over here, this, has the actual um, Yezu design bracket on there. Okay, so, somebody asked me about that yesterday. I've never seen that before. Yep, this is one of the new features on there. So locks into there, it's designed to be here. Now this is a stand that we have for it on there. There's, it's not a specific stand or anything on there. But this is what you can do, as you see, it's got handle grips there for you. You wanna hang it, suspend it. Now a couple things, I'm just gonna show this here because we've been showing it all morning long. Right now it's on battery. Now I'm gonna take and plug in the 13.8 volt DC. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, whoop, now the battery's off. That's simple, that easy. Now it's plugged in directly with the 13.8 volts. I have 10 watts coming out of it right now. Then you wanna go ahead and go back to portable operation. I'm gonna take and slide the battery back on there. That's what happens when you get old, you can't see. Now I take it on there. Now watch, as you see, actually take a look at it. 
Now you see that it's actually charging. Uh -huh. I'm mm -hmm. standing there, now yank, I'm still operating. So it's that easy, that flexible for it to go to do. One of the other big things I do want to point out um, for people, they've kind of asked this question and stuff, grounding screw is located on here too for you. So if you are going ahead and using like the FC40 connector, or you're going to be using something where you want to have the radio have a good ground plane for your antenna, you do have the actual um, grounding screw on there. Like I said, 13.8 volt DC um, jack out there for data, bands on there, because some people have been asking, can I hook my own antenna tuner to it, or, uh, or amplifier? We don't test with third-party devices, so we don't know, right? Um, but then you have all that functionality there. Speaker right into the bottom here for you. Um, gives you the main and sub concept. That's the other kind of thing people have asked. Well, what is the concept? Is it like an A and a B band? No, it's like the 710 over there that kind of has a main and a sub, the FTM510, main and sub kind of concept on there. We were at the campsite yesterday and there was probably 12 people around me and we hooked a, a infed half wave antenna to it and turned the, and found a station, mm -hmm. he's working POTA, and we turned the volume way up and it sounded freaking fantastic. Yeah. It was beautiful, beautiful audio coming out of that front firing speaker. Exactly, and a lot of people said, "What, John, what, what can you relate this to? Like, uh -huh. like we've seen on your videos, you're saying this, the, the, the brochure says this, what would you relate it to? Well, I'm gonna relate it to in performance and audio quality mm -hmm. to the 710. This is, yeah. this is probably, yeah. And, and, and that's what we kind of tell people, as they've said it, like, what is this equivalent to? This is equivalent to the people saying, I want a 710 with VHF and UHF in there. Gotcha. That's really what it is. Okay. It's not designed to also replace any radio on our line. Okay. You know, so it's like, oh, the 991's gonna be, um, you know, N now, and then this and this. No, it's, it's really SDR technology, DSP circuitry, mm -hmm. um, and that portable, transportable base configuration. The other thing I really, really like is that the battery itself has a USB-C port on it. Yep, That's, yep, so cool. so we did that because, once again, looking out there, USB-C is more of the standard thing now there. Yep. And so you're in the car, you're operating, you're on 13.8 volts DC. Hey, I want to charge the battery before I go walking out. Great, all I simply do is take it, slide it out on there, and then now, you know, you got it right in there. Hey, I can charge it in the car while I'm driving out to the site, and you're good to go from there. Now, there's a USB-C port on the radio itself. Yes. Does that charge the battery, or what is that for? No, battery charging is only going to be through the 13.8 volts DC. The USB, So when it's attached to the radio. When it's attached to the radio. So like in okay. this configuration, as yes. you see there, the red right. light's on there, it's charging okay. right on there. Mm -hmm. You want a faster charge, turn off the radio. Right. What the yeah. USB-C okay. is, that is going to be your interface going forward, because this does have like a built-in sound card. You are going to be doing FT8, um, okay. all those functionalities on there. Okay. We went with it for two things, real estate, yep. and then once again, USB-C, it's, it's hard to find more, an A. More standard. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. really hard to find yeah. an A. Yeah. But yes, um, and then like I said, the GPS unit, you're going to have the APRS functionality in there. You have currently Fusion to transmit and receive on it. Um, there is going to be some wires update stuff coming in August, and we're going to cover that, and that's going to be done by our firmware on it. But right now, it's literally VHF, UHF. Like I said, um, functionality of a 991, but design performance of an FT710 is the best way I can do it. The two got together when we weren't looking, and well, things happen. <laughs> so, so the external tuner, the soft tuner that goes on the back, what's the spec on that? Three to one? It's about a three, it's like it's like our FC50s and those, It's it literally is the same antenna tuner. It's about a three to one, up to about 100 ohms. Hands down, if you are gonna go ahead and be trying to, and as I said, gener, or, um, energize a wet noodle, get an external antenna tuner. Yeah. We've told that on there. But if you're like me, I play around in 80 meters, I like 3965, 3975, but hey, I want to get, maybe get down to 3850 on my home brew, you know, that I did, then that's gonna go and be great. Now let me hold, stay right here real quick. Yeah. So this is the fan option on there. Okay. It's really easy and nice to clip on there. I'm gonna kind of show you on this one here. I was wondering, somebody asked me if the fan went above or below the battery. Nope, it's gonna actually, it actually replaces the battery. It replaces so the battery. So it replaces the battery. And the reason being is, is that it needs to lock in to right. use it. The fan, we looked at the power consumption between the fan, the touch screen, the color screen, everything like that on there, there was gonna be no way that this battery is gonna last you a long time. Like I said, yeah. that's why we, when you're using a battery, you're looking at five to six watts, yeah. but it's gonna have increased time. But if you're looking at something that's 13.8 volts DC, now you got the fan, that's why we can go up to 10 watts on there. I mean, how, I mean if you just stick the battery on at full charge and receive only, how, estimated how long? Um, that, you know, I'm gonna say that's subjective and objective because of how you operate it. You can make the display, so we see the side-by-side -side display. Yep. You can change it to be up and down display, and you can actually do single display. So that's gonna all do those kind of different factors on there. How do you change that? 
Do you, uh, is that is that easy to do? Do you remember? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to remember because like <laughs> like we had so many questions come through. Uh, and I know it's it. The, I know. I know. There you go. So that's the okay. dual display, and okay. then that single display. Oh, okay. Because there are more features, like because it all it all it is all touch screen. So that's see, I was looking on there. the screen for a button, but the buttons over there the are button physically right. right. There. Yeah, yep. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And that's why okay. it's like there's there's a lot of different things too because when you get into the functionality on there, you can actually kind of turn the screen off if you want to, flash the screen, test the screen, change all that functionality on there. So there's a lot to move around on there. Now, this is the FC80. Okay. Now, the FC80 is designed to, you could, if you wanted to, attach over the fan, but it's more so designed, we take the fan off, we put the battery on, we take and attach the antenna tuner onto it. There's the modularity. You connect it up to your HF port on here, and then you connect it up to the actual, I won't do that because I got all the plugs in, but you connect it into the data jack there, and now you're going to go ahead and have the connection right off there for the antenna tuner. Another thing I know that a lot of people were asking about, they were saying, what is an M connector? That's been the biggest thing. Well, if you see, it's basically like the equivalent of an SO239 yeah. connector, yeah. but an M connector doesn't need 50 ohms. So that's why you'll see it used a lot like in video and stuff like that on there. And what better sense, if you think about it, okay, wait a minute. This is an antenna tuner. Is it going to be 50 ohms here? No, it's not. Why is it going to be? Well, because guess what? <laughs> it's, it's not 50 ohms. So, right. um, so right. that's that's why it's an M connector. Same okay. thing on the SPA1, which is, there's another one right next to it. They're M connectors because you're not going to have necessarily 50 ohms going to it. That's hence why there's an antenna tuner in there. The antenna tuner's on there. But will the PL259 still connect oh, yeah, to it? Still, yeah, it still it just, works. It's the it's same. Just, you're yeah. right. So if you take a look at it, it looks the same. Yeah. PL259 yeah. will connect right to it. Okay. But when you look at the the the, the operational parameters of an M connector, yeah. it is not 50 ohms. Gotcha. So that's that's the reason. I know a lot of people are freaking out. They, yeah. I heard so many people say, oh, it's a Motorola connector. It's just from proprietary. Oh, no, it's not. God. It's yeah. just <laughs> non-50 ohms on there. Okay. Perfect. Well, that is slick. I like mine. Everyone says, hey, how do you like it? And I'm like, well, it's great, but I haven't actually used it yet. I haven't taken it out and transmitted on it yet. So, uh, but I'm looking forward to it, man. Thanks for your time, John. No problem.